What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of 10K on the Bay, my journey to 10,000 live listings on eBay. Today, I'm doing an update video to let you guys know where I'm at and the changes that I'm making in my system. I have created an eBay office, which is a big improvement for me because I was just working randomly, but now I have a little bit more of a professional setup and I want to treat myself like a business. And most importantly, I wanted to share with you guys that I'm treating it like a business. No longer am I just doing it sort of like as a hobby or as an experiment. I'm going full on business right now. So I want to show you guys 10 things that um, I'm doing to improve. So I am going to um, put it all in the description. So if you guys don't want to watch the video, just read the description. I have put the 10 major changes that I'm making to give you guys an idea of what's going on. So. Um, the first thing that I made a change on was originally I was using this clothespin system um, where I basically put the bin location for me for let's say B49 and item number 16. Um, I switched from that because um, these were getting worn out and I sold probably 2,000 items in this method and these were getting pretty beat up. So I, I'm switching from the system, no longer using the, the clip system and I'm switching to the clothespin. So the clothespin is a little bit more, um, let's see, the clothespin is a little bit more durable, obviously, and then also it's easy to exchange or switch it out if it gets damaged or something because it's actually handwritten on there. So I'm going to hand build the first 10,000 items in my store to give me a good idea. And then eventually, if I like, I can add a barcode to the system and have the identical system and, um, yeah, so I'm going to switch to the clothespin system. That's the first major change. Um, and I'd say probably 50% of my system is switched over to this guy, which is a lot better. Um, I haven't used this mic before, but I've had it the entire time I've been doing YouTube. I just <laughs> never set it up. Okay, so now let's go to the second improvement, which is now all of my cost of goods sold is now stored in my custom SKU system. So it's going to say, um, A9418 colon cost of goods, so five bucks. So 19418 colon five colon 34. And 34 stands for 34th week of the year. And I think that's very important because if you have, um, uh, th that way I, my, I can just share my document with the bookkeeper and they will be able to do the cost of goods sold for me because I don't want to do all that homework because it's a lot of work. Um, and yeah, I just want to make sure to outsource the bookkeeping because it's one of my least favorite things. Um, and yeah, anyway, I'm very excited about outsourcing bookkeeping and I'm making sure when I get home to immediately draft everything and make sure that the total of all my drafts equals the receipt. That way I'm covered, throw it in the shoebox. And then, you know, I'm covered as far as cost of goods sold, which is a major headache. And now it's gone. Um, so I also want to do a quick apology. I was wearing a shirt that was a little bit offensive. I did not realize it had the Confederate flag on it. So I've deleted all that stuff. I apologize for all the people that saw that shirt and were offended. Um, so yeah, my apologies for that. I'm not going to talk about it too much because I don't want to draw too much attention to that because it's not appropriate. Okay, so now my third thing is I'm now washing every single piece of clothing. And I'm going to answer all my questions, all the questions at the end of the, the 10 major improvements. So hang in there with for guys. But um, as far as um, washing all clothing, I'm moving that direction. Um, I just think that it's I'm a company now. I'm no longer just doing it as a hustle. I want to be a legit company. I want to tell all my customers our clothing is washed. It, it, it doesn't necessarily guarantee it's going to be in perfect condition, but I'm going to wash all my clothing because I think it's another opportunity for me to catch defects. I'm going to do defect checking in the beginning. I'm going to defect checking when I measure, when I photograph, and when I draft. So there's going to be multiple areas for me to keep returns low. And that's going to be my main concern. I want to reduce returns as low as possible if I'm going to sell in the clothing arena. And I'm really, really digging um, the concept of um, making sure that all my items are in perfect condition. Plus, in the eBay policy, it says you need to wash your clothing if you're going to sell pre-owned. It actually says that in the eBay policy, and I have not been doing that, so I'm switching over to making sure all my stuff is good. Okay, the next one is 
I am now routinely spreading peppermint oil around my storage facility. Not, I mean, I've never had a problem with bugs or mice or anything, but just to make sure, I think it could be a huge problem and a big issue if one of my customers gets a cockroach or something and then they post it on Instagram and then they're like, oh, this guy is sending roaches in the mail. So I don't want to be like that. Uh, my solution for new with tag stuff that I thrift, I'm probably going to throw it in the freezer. So I don't mind doing that. It's not going to damage the clothing and it should kill all the bugs. And I think that smells come from bacteria and I'm lucky to live in an area that's relatively mild. So it's not super hot here. It's not super... Um, humid but i am going to get a humidifier hum what are those things called i forgot what the device is called that measures humidity maybe somebody can throw that in the chat but if you um have a humidifier i can make sure that my area is not too moist and then also that's a terrible word you can store your poly mailers open so as an example um, these poly bags that I was storing clothing in are not airtight. So there's definitely air moving through this. But I'm going to switch away from this because this is one extra step that I want to get rid of. So I'm going to store it directly in the shipping receptacle because it's just going to be a lot um, better for me because I get to skip one step. I only want to be in charge of purchasing and shipping. And I don't want to forget that because in when I envision my perfect day, it doesn't include a single listing. I don't want to list any items. And I think as a representative of you guys on YouTube, I want to move towards a direction of not doing any listing. I think everyone would love that. We can get to the point where we're big enough that we don't have to have a lister. Okay. The next thing is I'm storing all my clothing in bins. And I think in the case that for some reason I have a bug or something, which I doubt because I'm washing every single piece of clothing, um, it'll be contained within one bin. And each time when I go through the bin, I'm going to double check the numbers. So I'm going to have a checklist of things to go through. And I number my bins, the items inside 1 through 25. So I'm going to quickly check and see if there's something um, misplaced. Because what I learned from selling the first couple thousand items is that um, some of the people that I hired to help me were dyslexic. Um, is that the right word for this dyslexia with numbers? Is it dysgraphic? I don't know the correct terminology, but if it said B9418, sometimes they were doing B1894. They were doing it opposite. So that's going to continue to happen on accident sometimes. So I need to make sure to go in there and double check when I'm looking through the bins to make sure inventory is in the right place. Also, I include this clip in my pictures because I want to double check by looking. So if it's in the picture and I can't find it because somebody missorted it, I'll still be able to find it uh, because of that. Okay. So let's see. Number six is I'm adding age to my listings. I think that's super critical. So again, let me repeat my system. A9418 colon price of the item. So let's say five bucks colon 34, which is the week of the year. That way when somebody makes an offer, I can go in there and I can decide, okay, um, this offer is ridiculous, um, but I've had this item for 10 weeks. I'm ready to move it. Something like that. That's why I have it in there. Although I am sourcing much higher quality items and the low key husky have a $36 average item. So I'm not too concerned. I can wait for that item to sell for 36 bucks because I'm sourcing good stuff. So I can wait. Now, if you're sourcing cheap stuff, which is what I did when I first started, that stuff, I want to make a huge point here. If you have something that sells for 15 plus shipping and you lower the price to 10 plus shipping, it doesn't necessarily sell faster. It doesn't have a very high popularity. Not very many people are looking for a used Banana Republic shirt. Like really not that many compared to other types of items. And even if there are a lot of people searching, there's a ton of people selling the same stuff for even 99 cents free shipping just to blow it out of their store. People, I see it on Instagram every day. I'm tired of looking at this item, so I want to sell it. You're kind of destroying the market for everybody when you sell something for a dollar free shipping. And I've tested it. I have stuff for a dollar free shipping and it doesn't sell fast. So like it doesn't make sense to lower your items that cheap because it doesn't make them sell faster. And I think that's really important for people to realize. But age in my custom SKU should help. Number seven, I no longer use eBay mobile at all. Pretty much no companies I have looked at use eBay mobile for anything. It's just too slow. 
There's not enough features on it. It doesn't have custom SKUs, so you can't walk around your, in your um, warehouse or garage and find anything, which is really annoying. So you can't actually use it for anything. So not using eBay mobile is forcing me to think like a business. Everything is separate. You're on a computer. I'm going to sign up for uh, Microsoft Parallels so I can look at some different software. I have to figure out how to automatically sync photos and drafts. There's no way I'm going to be manually connecting photographs and listings. That's a huge pain in the ass. Excuse my language. Um, and that's not a thing. I'm not going to do that anymore. Connecting it is a waste of time. And a lot of people do that, and they've been doing it for years. But I just think about if, let's say I do eBay for 10 years, one year of that 10 years is going to be matching photographs and listings, which is a horrible use of my existence. So not going to do that. I'm going to do the homework up front and figure out software that can connect the photographs with my listings for me, use file exchange. I'm looking to do ideally 200 listings five days a week and take two days off. That's a thousand listings per week in this eBay business. And doing that's really important for me to realize it's now time to use some tools like file exchange. Um, Turbo Lister is being phased out and they are bringing in a new uploading system. But when that comes out, I will learn how to use this one. For now, I'm going to learn how to use file exchange. I will figure it out and I'll be able to submit in one second all 200 listings, which is extremely exciting. Um, Okay, let's go to number eight, which is I actually did not envision what 200 listings looks like. So if you guys look at my Instagram today, I actually set up 200 listings and looked at it and looked at how much time it would take me to sort it. I want to know what it takes to actually do that one time so I can do it every single day. And that was a huge problem with me. It's always been a problem. I am stuck income wise. I've been making the same amount of money for a long time until this year. And this year, every single month, every single week even, I'm making more money than the previous week. And it's not a comfortable position for me because I'm not used to that. And the responsibilities get bigger. Every single week, there's more people I'm involving. Um, my audience is larger and it's, it's really cool, but it also has made it so I need to focus on what's good. I'm getting rid of all the ideas that are good actually and just doing the great. So I'm going to be doing a live event in March. If you guys want to come, we're going to be announcing that soon, but I'm going to do one live event with my Facebook group, the reseller fam, and have some great admins. They're going to help me with that process, which is fantastic. So I'm going to get into that. Um, that's something I consider great. And then I'm also going to do continue my Patreon, but I'm going to cap it at 50 people. So if you guys haven't signed up, that's actually my um, my 10th point, but I'll bring it up right now, is I'm going to close my mastermind group because it's too big. And my ambitions for it don't make sense because I make a lot more money doing eBay than I do talking to people in the mastermind calls. So um, my goal for eBay is to get to $250 an hour. That's how much money I want to make. I cannot make that much and charge people that for eBay advice because first of all, I'm not qualified to give eBay advice. So I'm just grouping you with people that are um, doing eBay together and it's really fun. But of course, that's what they're paying for. People pay $100 a month for my mastermind group to have people push them every single week and stay on track. Most likely, you already know what you need to do in your business next. You can only do one week at a time. You, there's only so much you can do this week. So once you figure that out, get a friend, get a buddy, get a group, and keep yourself accountable moving one step to the next. And that's really, really important. And so I'm just letting you guys know I'm going to cap it at 50 people. It's about half full now. So once that's full, I'm going to basically turn off any new inquiries for that because I don't have any more time. Um, the last point is I sat down with my girlfriend a couple of days ago and we wrote down all the stuff that we wanted. And that was a really weird exercise. It was like, where do we want to live? What kind of cars do we want to drive? How many kids do we want to have? What kind of life do we want our kids to have? Do we want to do any charity? Do we want to work? What do we want? And um, it's an extremely valuable exercise I recommend you guys do. I want to do this exercise every quarter for the rest of my life because it's important to progress. and. I've noticed that like I do a good job of scheduling time with her and each week we do something interesting or unique and we plan trips and it's great, but there's more to it than just the fun part. There's nuts and bolts. Like how much money do you want to make? How much, you know, what kind of life do you want to have for your kids is totally, totally different. 
And since this is what we this, this is what we figured out, money doesn't make you happy, but money doesn't make you sad either. Money doesn't have anything to do with it, so we might as well have it, right? If it doesn't have any bearing on whether you're happy or not, we might as well make a lot of it. In the Bay Area, we did the math. In order to comfortably own a home here, we need a combined income of three hundred and fifty thousand. Um, my family is completely broke, and her family is just normal. So, like, I don't have a somebody I can ask for a down payment. Like, pretty much all my friends in the Bay Area that buy a home, it's because their parents gave them a hundred grand for the down payment. If you don't have that, it's very challenging to own a piece of property here. But I want to do it, and I've decided why not. You know, I'm only here for a short time. I want to get exactly what I want, and why not? If somebody is driving, here's an interesting thing. Um, when Mark Cuban was talking about being a billionaire, and he's like, do you ever feel guilty when you buy something super expensive? And he's like, it's all relative. It's hard for me to think of things as expensive. When you're this rich, everything is like a penny. And it would be the equivalent of you buying a car for a penny. It doesn't affect your income or your anything. You can't blow wealth like that. So he has chosen to do things that are more meaningful. When I was talking to my, or for him, some for some people that is meaningful, but for my girlfriend and I, we we actually want to continue to work forever. So unlike the normal millennial uh, stereotype of just wanting to chill and live at home, that's not what we want. We want to work forever, provide value to the world, and at a certain point, it starts getting really crazy. If your income is like seven figures, the everything you do is planned. Like if you want to, you know. You have to plan when you put your socks on, when you want to do that kind of value and you're that organized and you're having that big of an effect on the world. And I, I want to give a shout out to Grant Cardone. I know he's kind of an arrogant and sometimes, but I like it. He was talking about charity work and he's like, when people go around and they're like, hey, uh, we're raising money so we can finish um, this part of the school. There's a, you know, we had a water leak and now there's an area, a wing of the school that needs an issue. We're raising money. Can you guys spare five, 10 or 25 bucks? And Grant Cardone was like, how much does it cost to do the repair? I'll just write a check. Like that's badass being at that level where you can do something like that, actually have an effect. And when you look at all the cool stuff in the Bay Area, that's charity. It usually has somebody's name on it, which means some baller dude wrote a check and just made that happen. You know, that's that's cool. So I don't know if I ever want to be at that particular level, but um, just sharing with you guys that exercise of just writing down everything that we wanted made me feel a lot better. It calmed me, it grounded me. It made me feel like, okay, what kind of parent do I want to be? What kind of, you know, what kind of person do I want to be? What kind of boyfriend do I want to be? What kind of husband do I want to be? And plus, she's charging me a progressive penalty um, for delaying the marriage. So I'm going to get on that. Let me look, take a look at some questions. Um, I am done. I have not. I have actually always had this this mic set up. This is about fifty bucks on Amazon. Super cheap. Um, I just never used it. Um, DJ Ten K. That's right. Um, let's see. I just started selling on eBay. You went from zero to a hundred, guys. I am starting a new show on Wednesdays called the First One Hundred Listings with um Cl uh, with Kevin the Clutch Swag. So um, we have been talking back and forth and doing some kind of type of collaboration. And I, you know, clearly, if you guys do any type of social media for uh, as an influencer, 99% of your questions will be beginners. So like, how do I start my account? How do I do this? How do I make my first 100 bucks? So we're going to do a series that's only the first 100 listings. And that should be able to help us save time. So we're not answering the same questions over and over again on Wednesday nights. We will be doing a show only for people who have 100 listings and less. Um, let's see. How am I going to go live in the middle of nowhere uh, like my last life? So I want the ability to live anywhere. That's, that's what I'm looking for. I want the ability to live anywhere, hang out with whoever I want, eat whatever I want. And um, when I was making a lot of money in sales and I went to go eat, I would just buy what I wanted to eat on the menu. I never looked at the price. I was just like salmon, steak, whatever I was feeling like. And I, I just ordered it. And like T. Harv Ecker said that as soon as he became rich, he never ate chicken again. And I thought that's so badass. Because he's like, when I was poor, I always get chicken because it's the cheapest thing on the menu. So basically, no more chicken ever. Once you make it, you never need to eat chicken. So that's not going to be my jam. But I just want to be able to order whatever and uh, live wherever. And if I can do what I want to do in California, then that means I can live in the middle of nowhere or... I was listening to Peter Schiff um, 
talk about if you move to Puerto Rico, it basically doubles your income. And that's that's pretty badass because Puerto Rico is still considered the US, so you don't need to fill out any fancy paperwork. If you were to move there, um, you know, that might be that might be something that's really cool. Uh, yeah, this shirt is not hopefully it's not offensive other than the maybe vegans. Um, I apologize in advance. I may have to wear a pure white shirt and so I don't offend anybody. Um, let's see. What's up? What's up, people? Um, what about dry clean only items? So I did talk to my local dry cleaner. I can dry clean items at a dollar a piece at the 200 item level. So yeah, that's a good point because with endless entrepreneurs, shout out to Luke, um, I'd like to sell more suits and dry cleaning is definitely going to become a thing. So that would be pretty cool to have one of those Z racks, roll it into a van, drive over to the dry cleaner, roll it out and then roll back in. That'd be, that'd be pretty cool. I like that. Um, that's true. I need a pop filter, which I have. I ordered, it came with this kit and I also need the little radio button that says 10 K. Those are pretty cool. Um, yeah, I'm moving towards washing clothing. Let's see. Bed bugs. I'm not, I mean, in, in California is pretty wealthy guys. Most of the clothing that I get smells like fresh laundry or is dry cleaned. That's the stuff that I get here in California. It costs a little bit more than the rest of the country, but like, and also it has very mild weather. It's not super hot here or super cold. I imagine the clothing here is less gross than other places. I could be wrong, but um, after looking at that video from Suzanne Wells, who I know, and we're trying to do some type of collaboration also, her video was a little bit clickbaity, like the disgusting truth about thrift store clothing or something something dramatic like that. But it was legit. Like she did her homework and she did the homework on how the Goodwill, um, the Goodwills, they can store their clothing in cardboard, which um, cockroaches love or in tractor trailers where mice live. And she showed graphic pictures of mice having babies. And it was like, it was too much for me to, to watch. But anyway, convince me. I'm going to wash all my clothing now. Um, I'm going to put peppermint oil around the perimeter of my storage, even though I don't have a spider or a mouse problem. I just think it's preemptive. The best um, type of um, solution is preventative. OK, let's see. Hygrometer, they asked the word. So Reezy's in the chat. Shout out to Reezy Resells. Hygrometer. Um, let's see. Why would you get stuff with bugs? Be the reason you get stuff with bugs is, you know, as you guys know, I'm buying some bulk clothing lots, and it's stored in it's stored in cardboard boxes. That's where bugs live. So, this is one of the reasons why I don't sell electronics anymore. I love selling electronics, but electronics are where bugs live. Like. More than one time I've been at Goodwill and I take out a VCR and a bug crawls out the back of it because that's, that's where bugs live. So um, as profitable as that stuff is, I'm just not going to mess with it. Um, what do I recommend for vintage? Oh, the closet smell for vintage clothes. Hmm, that's a good question. I might try the freezer. I think freezers have gotten rid of most smells for me. Um, and I think smells are bacteria. So if you kill the bacteria first, then you can, you know, there's probably some anti-environmental sprays you can spray to make it go away. What's up, Mary's in the chat. I'm thinking about doing a listing party with Instagram and YouTube people. So maybe we just go to a, um, a building and it's called shut up and list. Like shout out to Teresa Cox who came up with that hashtag and we go to a warehouse and as soon as you get in, we take your we take your phone, I mean, put your phone in airplane mode, and you get a little place, and you just list for eight hours, and then you leave. You don't even say hi or hug or anything. You just go there, list, and then leave. So I think that'd be a cool thing to do. It'd be pretty fun. Uh, let's see, what's up, thrifty reseller Tracy Thrifts? I don't usually do shout outs. Let's see. Um, let's see. You sprinkle DE everywhere. What's DE? Probably some type of um, repellent. Let's see. If you guys have any suggestions or thoughts, you can email me at 10k on the bay at gmail.com and I'll hook it up and take a look and post it up. Um, mobile fund says the eBay mobile is half baked. It's okay, it's for like an amateur seller, um, which is it's completely legit, even for like a I would consider 
under 4,000 listings, not a business. It's just a maybe a full-time income, but it's not a business until, I think the, um, to be considered a small business in the US, you need 15 employees, that's small. And then 100 to 500 or something, or 15 to 100 is medium or something like that. I know under 15 items is considered a micro business. So I'm not gonna even be a small business, I'm gonna be a micro business still. Uh, have I ever thought about trying eBay Valet? I've never considered it because the commission is too high. Um, no, I, I don't mean a dehumidifier. I meant that because here it doesn't really get humid. I meant the device that measures humidity in case for some freak reason the humidity goes really high here, but it's not high here. Uh, and oh yeah, that's true. As bad as the eBay app is on iOS, it's miles ahead of um, the Android eBay app. And guys, I don't want to talk too badly on eBay mobile. It's completely fine for normal sellers. It's just difficult to list 200 items a day with eBay, eBay mobile. Um, Valley Roots um, stores their clothing in Ziploc bags. Well, you can do that. Um, I've done this system, which is, it's not airtight, but I, it would be difficult for a bug to get in here. Um, if you use a Ziploc bag, it could be airtight, but I don't know if I want my stuff airtight. I think the oxygen rolling through it is, is a good thing, so it doesn't get too stale. Uh, oh, they are in Tampa. That's true. They are, they, uh, so Rally Roots, shout out to Ryan and Allie. Um, they are in, or Allison, they're in Tampa, Florida. It's very humid there, so it makes sense for them to maybe go super um, humid. Uh, guys, if you are in the chat, please hit the like button so other people can check this video out. Very much appreciated. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do that. Uh, what do I use to wash my clothing? Um, I am just using regular laundry detergent. I haven't thought that far. I did pick up a washer and dryer on Craigslist um, to use that's separate than my own. So I'm probably, I need to do the math on what's the most economical way to, to, um, to wash clothing. Uh, and also, shout out to um, Bethany Just Thrifted. She was talking about writing off potentially a percentage of your water. That's cool. That's a new write off that I had not thought of. Um, true. If you store a bag, uh, an item in an airtight bag, and there is moisture in it, it'll grow mold or mildew. So, you just signed a lease on an office today. That is smart. I will probably i would enjoy just being able to operate this out of my house but eventually if i'm if i'm growing and it keeps it remains profitable maybe i will move into a warehouse one day uh let's see i'm very excited for you too that's a good that's a good um upgrade moving to the office and it's nice being able to separate work from play your clothing items are hung out on a chain link fence post cheap and it works that's what's up. Uh, what's up, Tanya? You use Octiva to list. Um, I haven't tried any. Oh, actually, that's not true. I've tried uh, Ink Frog, and it's okay. It's not too bad. Um, I want to use eBay's API, though. I want to do an Excel file and have corresponding photos and upload. That's that's what I want to do. I love the eBay system, and I just want to continue using it. I don't want to pay the extra money for that. It's not necessary. Um, yeah, I'm talking about the law of attraction. You just think of what you want. Like, okay, here's the thing. Before, like this week, I didn't even know what, what I wanted to look like. So how are you supposed to get it? It's like, I was, I feel like I was walking in the right direction. But now that I know where I'm going, I can actually start sprinting. I can start running. I can be like the hustle bee. Shout out to Ken in the chat. He knows where he's going and he's just sprinting. So like, that's really, really dope. Like if you know where you're going and you start walking, and you start telling people, hey, this is where I'm going, then maybe somebody will give you a ride on their camel, and then you're going, and then maybe you meet some baller dude that has um, a beat up Corolla, and then you keep going, and some dude's like, no, get on my bullet bike, and then soon you're on a jet plane, and you're just reaching your goal in record time. That's what happens when you know where you're going, and you ask for help. That's another major thing. People will help you get there. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Mark Cuban is the bomb. I love him. He's made a million dollars. Three, I mean, three billion is three thousand million. That's that's amazing. Um, what's up, Terry Berry? It's been a while. Um, glad you can make the chat. Uh, Rally Roots is in the chat. What's up, guys? Uh, let's see here. 
There's a lot of people here. Thank you so much for stopping by, everybody. Very appreciative. Uh, have I ever checked out Gov Deals? Yes, I have. So Gov Deals is very cool. Gov Deals is the USPS site for um, missing packages. So all those items that you send that, that um, get lost, somebody buys them on govdeals.com. Or is it govdeals.net? Uh, it's just Gov Deals, G O V Deals. It's the government website for that stuff. And then bulk, I believe, is UPS. So let's try it all. Uh, yeah, I am going to figure out how to upload the files directly to eBay. The part that I don't like is renaming the photos. Um, and there's a gentleman in my um, mastermind group named Jay Scott who has a system where he doesn't have to rename them. And I don't know if he's comfortable with me sharing that. I'll ask him. But his system, he does not have to rename the photos and it syncs with the listing, which is fantastic because if I have to rename the photos, I might as well just upload them. Like that's not that's not a thing. That's not necessarily faster. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, Ryan and Ali are really good. So I'm supposed to do um, a series with them, but I just am so bad at video editing. And I'm just I'll just let Ryan do it the first time. I'll let them edit the video the first time, and then I'll figure it out. Um, it takes a while. Like I've been, I've had over a hundred videos. I can barely edit like myself scrambling an egg. It's, it's really, really rough, guys. Um, and I think it's important for you guys. I'm going to shout out the four agreements again because I try to listen to it every day now because it's really important to not take things personally. Do your best. Um, be a person of your word. So make your word really matter, and don't make assumptions. That's very, very, very important. And if you like. Don't do don't do that. Just focus on facts. Do what you say you're gonna do, and don't take things personal. Because most of the time, if people um, are not feeling well, like if anytime you get a bad message on eBay, that person is probably having a bad day, and I recognize that now. So I'm empathetic. And after looking at Greg Morris cards username, I showed that in a couple of past videos. That person has 1.6 million feedback and zero negative. 1.6 million transactions. And of the 1.6 million, they've only had 36 negative, and they fixed 100% of them. That is, that's some dedication to customer service. Um, let's, yeah. Thank you guys again for stopping by. No problem. Let's see. Reezy's in the house. Uh, what gets me jazzed up to live to keep listing? The fact that I'm gonna die is the uh, okay. Actually, that's not that. It's the fact that my relationships with the people I love is going to end. That's what keeps me focused. And I just don't want to waste that. So I don't have time for people that I love. So I definitely don't have time for people I don't love. And people that suck, I don't have time for you. Because I barely have time for the people that I really love. So it's just really, really tough. Um, Hank, thank you very much for the super chat of five bucks. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, and I, I just this is how I see it. If you feel like you're lazy, OK, this is some woo-woo. Woo -woo, um, stuff here but i feel like we're always vibrating and i don't i think this is from uh this is probably more law of attraction stuff this is the part that i realize when you're sitting still you're actually not sitting still you're just vibrating at a really low frequency and when you're listing as fast as you can or you're sprinting then you're operating on the highest frequency you can doing things as fast as you can versus doing nothing right these are the two realms right and so that's why people say hey if you can just list one item then you you can start going i saw that on instagram today if you have trouble listing just list one item and then you can your the momentum will keep you going but think about just that generic analogy you're vibrating really low and this is vibrating as fast as possible if you just do a little bit the momentum should carry you up and um that's why i'm trying to align myself with people with a fast vibration like um shout out to oss empire sam on instagram he's like a seven figure seller and he's 21 years old so his frequency is like a hummingbird it's really fast right he doesn't sleep he just hustles school crushes on ebay and amazon i don't know if he has a girlfriend so ladies if you're single check him out on instagram uh let's see what brand should we keep an eye out for okay here we go this is the four agreements again don't make assumptions just because it's Gucci doesn't mean it's going to sell well. 
get the brand, look it up, do your homework, raise your standards, right? That is another reason why I'm washing clothing. I'm not going to wash a piece of clothing that's not worth anything, right? It's not worth my time. I'm going to raise my standard. I'm only going to buy clothing that's worth washing. Otherwise, why do it? Um, I look up every single piece of clothing right now. Uh, let's see. What if people that suck ass are in the same are the same one that you love? Okay, that's a good point. So sometimes you have people in your life that um, bring you down. Their vibration is lower than yours. You just need like you actually can't change that. My parents are like that. My parents operated at a really really low vibration, and it's challenging because I love my parents, but then also any kind of association with them brings my vibration down which really sucks, but that's just a reality. So it's tough when you have that situation. I'm not a therapist. I don't pretend to be one. Um, I think the best you can do is don't take it personally. When someone vibrates on a lower level than you, don't feel responsible for that. Because I used to. I used to feel responsible for them feeling bad, but that's that's not my fault. That's their, their own doing. You, you're only responsible for your own feelings. And hopefully you vibrating at a high level you can help them vibrate higher and get out of that situation um ken says find the brands that make you the most money that's true but i'm just making the point that not all nike is created equal ken looks through hundreds and hundreds of nike items sometimes to only find one golden nugget so it's not just a brand um if i could pick any brands i would pick luxury brands like I would consider Nike the lowest luxury brand. Um, you buy anything that's in good shape. I don't know if I would do that. Um, oh yeah, one one more uh, mindset thing. You should bless the things that you want. So if you don't have money, stop saying rich people suck. Say rich people are the shit. I love rich people. They're amazing. I love them. They're providing so much value to the world. And guess what? You're gonna move that direction. Bless things that you want, and um, it's going to happen. Do you think eBay's white background requirements will cause a problem? I actually think eBay wants a white background because it saves memory in their system. I'm just talking out of my ass here, but like, I don't want a white background in my store and I will never use one because oh, not, I won't say never. I prefer not to use one because I don't want my listings to look like everybody else. And I'm perfectly happy with the traffic that eBay generates for my listing. I know it's not Google searchable or other things like that, but there's plenty of people on eBay already looking for my item. And I just want it to look professional and accurate. The white background is a personal personal choice. You need a NorCal meetup. Yeah, you should, you should uh, email me and we'll meet up. Oh, Thrifty Boss Babe is making one. So shout out to Laura, Thrifty Boss Babe. She's doing a NorCal meetup. She's gonna announce it soon. Um, I'm also thrifting with her tomorrow that's exciting um let's see so what you want to reap yes i actually think you get the exact amount of plants that you sow is a sow so man i'm so bad at being a farmer um let's see you'll be buying real estate in coma hopefully um i'd love to buy real estate up there any hawaii resellers up Greg, I don't know if well, there's a lot of resellers in Hawaii, um, but there is FBA Hustle, and they're in Hawaii, and those guys are those guys are awesome. They've been really, really nice to me and helping me get started with FBA. I'm doing FBA, but really slowly um, because my main focus is getting to 10,000 items. And at that point, I'm going to do some Amazon, baby. Laura, what's up? You just recently uh, moved to an office. Awesome. If you can't conceive it, you can't receive it. Wow, that is some that is amazing. That's just nice and tidy and, and a nice little nugget for you guys. If you can't conceive it, you can't receive it. And I've been really working on that. What does it look like? What does the person that I want to so they say fake it till you make it, but that's not quite it. You need to know what what it is to to fake it. And then they say great artists steal. If you know what you're looking for exactly and you your mind can't differentiate between what it thinks and reality. So just figure out exactly what where you're going, envision it, and it'll happen. Um, and I like the uh, Gary V like um, positivity always wins, negativity always loses. 
I like that vibration. So I'm going to stick there. I'm using a lot of questionable words. Um, let's see here. Wow, there's a lot of chat. Thanks, guys. If you guys are still in the chat and you haven't hit the like button yet, go ahead and do that. I would appreciate it. Um, drink, <laughs> drink your daily motivation. That's that's true, guys. Um, diet is super, super important. Um, I'm doing a green smoothie every single day. Um, and I really, this is so ghetto. I love drinking it right out of the container. That's just one less dish. You have to worry about it. This is a streamlined situation. Yeah, this is a cool setup. So behind me, there's space for two flat layers. And I'm going to be doing all the drafting. Okay, real quick, got some more. You guys have time for some more nuggets. I'm going to drop some heat right now. Um, so the people in my group that are able to do so far over 100,000 listed. So um, I only have about $45,000 with the stuff listed. The people that are over 100 really have their processes set up. So um, they're either buying brand new stuff like uh, Ken Hustle B, who's one of the 100K members, and he's buying stuff that you can just scan in multiple quantity. The Clutch Swag does the same thing. If you spend a majority of your time sourcing, getting great stuff, then you, you can cut down your listing time. You can get to that goal quick. Or if you get stuff that's easily available like me, the stuff that I sell, you can buy anywhere. Um, but it requires you to sell a ton of it to make money. So for me, I need to worry about listing, photography, uploading photos, making sure those processes are all crispy clean. And that is where my focus is. And the one part that I'm not going to outsource is the titles and the price because I want to become a super duper expert in my categories. So I want to sell shoes and two other categories of clothing. And I want to be really, 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 really in tune with the pricing so that when I'm in there pricing, I understand the market, I know what I'm doing and I'm crushing it, but then the key is also automation and speed. So if you look at the big stores that we review on uh, the Smashdown or the Smackdown show, those big stores, they only take one or two pictures. And the reason is because I think it cuts down their listing cost to like 50 cents a listing. Because when you're only taking one or two pictures versus 12, it's six times faster. And most people are paying between one and $2 a listing. And so I imagine they're doing it for 50 cents max. Uh, Vitamix Power, that's right. Um, am I still opening my new store tomorrow? Okay, I think so. I'm going to go over it tonight. I'm having dinner with my girlfriend shortly. I'm not sure if I'm going to try to do it. Uh, no, actually, I'm going to do it. Tomorrow, I'm going to open the third store that just is 250 listings. And... I don't know if I can do the entire thing in a day, but I'm going to try. I'm going to start sourcing with Laura tomorrow and see if we can do that. Um, and I think it's important to realize everyone's ideal eBay store is a different size. So I want to have baby, medium, and gigantic store for you guys to see. And I mean, obviously, I make money off of YouTube and my Patreon. So like, I want to experiment for you guys. You're paying for me to try that stuff for you. Um, Ken is taking a break to figure out his storage before he gets more stuff. I've been doing that, guys. If you've seen my store, they're only growing a couple hundred listings a week because I'm figuring out all the accounting, um, all the bookkeeping, all the stuff that's really, really good. And if you get that stuff pat, then you can grow as fast as you want. But I just I want to let you guys know also, final tip that I really have to go, which is when you grow, everything breaks. And I think that's important. That's like Mark Zuckerberg's famous line, um, break something. So as you grow, you're not going to be used to it. If you are lifting weights, um, also my, a squat rack that I just bought just arrived, which is super sick. I'm going to get, I'm going to get jacked and ripped um, on this journey as well. But um, when you exercise, they say the last few reps count. Arnold Schwarzenegger, I mean Muhammad Ali, when they asked how many sit-ups do you do every day, he said I don't know. And I said, what do you mean you don't know? And he says, I don't. I only start counting when it hurts. That's what I'm talking about. Let's start listing till it hurts. That's when it really matters because if you're used to listing 10 a day, um, listing 11 a day is even going to be hard because you're not used to that. And think about doing that consistent growth. If you list 10 a day and you grow one listing every single week, at the end of the year, that's 62 listings a day, which is massive. A $10 profit a day, if you're 62 listings a day, that's $620 of profit you're putting in your pocket every day. That's massive. It's only increasing your listing by one a day. So 
it doesn't count until you're pushing yourself beyond yourself. My goal of 200 listings a day is way more than I actually need to do, but it pushes me to learn every single day stuff's breaking and I'm uncomfortable and I'm learning to be comfortable in that setting where every day I'm in that growth mode and I'm happy instead of trying to reach some goal in the future that's arbitrary, like, oh, I'll be happy when I do a million, I'll be happy when I do a hundred or whatever. Just be happy with progress today and then you can be happy every day instead of happy when you hit some crazy goal in the future. So everyone, thank you so much for stopping by. Hit the like button on the way out. And um, I'll see you guys um, tomorrow. I'm doing a show with Tino, the Soul Advisor, talking about shoes. That's one of my categories I'm going super deep in. So shout out to Tino, the Soul Advisor. Tomorrow I'm going to talk about that. I'm also doing um, a show with um, a lady, I forgot her name, from LSU. And then on Friday for Reseller Smackdown, I'm going to replace that show with 14-year-old teen thrifts. She's in junior high or maybe she's a freshman in, in high school and she's selling like crazy. So thanks, guys. Everyone have a great one. Peace out.